أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين بارئ الخلائق أجمعين باعث الأنبياء والمرسلين ثم الصلاة والسلام على خير خلقه العبد المؤيد والرسول المسدد حبيب إله العالمين أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين وصحابته المنتجبين ورد في دعاء الافتتاح لمولانا صاحب العصر والزمان عجر الله تعالى فرجه الشريف فصرت أدعوك آمنا وأسألك مستأنسا لا خائفا ولا وجلا مدلا عليك فيما قصدت فيه إليك The holy month of Ramadan is the month of worship is the month of fasting, the month of praying, the month of reciting the holy Quran, the month of supplication the month of coming closer to Allah Azza wa Jal. and this is very positive This is an excellent spiritual opportunity that we won't find anywhere else throughout the year. Some get bored of fasting, they get tired. Some wish that Ramadan would pass by very quickly. These people are very unfortunate. Someone would say, I wish Ramadan was like the World Cup. Once every four years and only in one country. This is ridiculous. This person does not know the value of the month of Ramadan. Ramadan is a sacred opportunity. However, we must pay attention to a very dangerous illness that comes with worship, with praying to Allah Azza wa Jal, and worshiping Allah, and fasting, and praying. With these supplications, with the recitation of the Quran, there can come a very dangerous illness known as al-ujb. What is ujb? Ujb is self-admiration. When you pray and worship, you reach a point when you say, Alhamdulillah, I did something good. I did something fantastic. Look at my salah. Look at my fasting. Look at my recitation of the Quran. It's unbelievable. And we begin to admire our own worship. We begin to think highly of our worship. This is extremely dangerous. Al-Ujb, ayyuha al-Azza, maradun yubtala bihi al-kathir min al-mu'mineen. Naam, yu'jab bi'amalih. Ta'jibuhu ibadatuh. Ya'ti bi'amal salha fi shahri Ramadan. Yusalli salat al-layl, yaqra'a. الأدعية المعهودة في شهر رمضان فيعجب بها فيدخل العجب إلى قلبه وهذا مرض خطير انظروا أيها الأعزاء الشيطان يأتي إلى المؤمن مو من خلال شرب الخمر ولا من خلال القمار ولا من خلال المعاصي والذنوب يأتي إليه من خلال العبادة من خلال الدعاء من خلال تلاوة القرآن يدخل العجب في قلبه This is something very, very dangerous. To think that you're extremely pious, you're extremely righteous, and that your ibadah, your acts, acts of worship are incomparable to others. Your acts of worship are greater than others. This was the disease of Iblis. Iblis. What got him to object to Allah and refuse to prostrate? to Adam alayhi salam. Iblis had worshipped Allah for 6,000 years. He thought highly of himself. My worship, my salah, my dua, who is like me? This is exactly the thoughts of Iblis. Iblis kana mu'jiban bi'ibadatih. Wa fi'lan, kana abidan, kana yudhra bihi al-mathal. Iblis, qabla an tam... qabla an yatamarrad ala Allah azza wa jal, kana yudhra bihi al-mathal, bi'ibadatih, bi'ta'atih. لكن دخل في قلبه العجب أعجب بعبادته أعجب بدعائه أعجب 
بخضوعه لله عز وجل فرفض السجود إلى الله قال إلهي أنا وأنا أعبدك أنا أعبدك لستة آلاف سنة أو الله I've been worshiping you for six thousand years continuously you want me to prostrate to a man created from clay and I've been created from fire no look at where Iblis reached a lot of us can fall into this trap a lot of us can fall into the trap of ujb. Some of us, we donate to the mosque. All of a sudden, we think we've become hatam al ta'i Because I donated to the masjid. This, is, this has a lot of value. Some pray salat al-layl once or twice or three times. All of a sudden, they assume they have become al-imam Zain al-Abideen alayhi salam. Or they, they stood up for oppression once or twice they spoke out they posted something on Facebook against an oppressive regime against Israel and in support of Gaza all of a sudden they're Abu Dhar al Ghifari they have self -admir admiration they think highly of themselves this is a very dangerous emotion my dear brothers and sisters look at this hadith from Imam الصادق عليه السلام عن أبي عبد الله عليه السلام قال إن الله علم look at the psychology look at how when we as righteous people sometimes we slip sometimes we slip we commit a sin here there as much as we're guarding ourselves we guard ourselves the same way we look at the camera on the door the doorstep we guard it make sure no one comes in as much as we guard ourselves, sometimes we slip. That slip is good for us. Allah says this, sometimes when you slip here and there, this is good for you. Why? Because if you don't slip, you will think you are infallible. You will assume you're infallible. انظروا ماذا يقول الإمام الصادق يقول إن الله علم أن الذنب خير للمؤمن من العجب ولولا ذلك ما ابتلي مؤمن بذنب أبدا البعض الله عز وجل يبتليه بالذنب يرتكب الذنب وهذا شيء جيد له لماذا؟ لأنه لولا الذنب يدخل في قلبه العجب يقول أنا معصوم أنا إنسان مؤمن متدين أنا إنسان خاشع من مثلي وعبادتي من مثلي وطاعتي لله فالله عز وجل يتركه للحظة يتركه للحظة هذا الإنسان يسقط يرتكب الذنب من يرتكب الذنب يكتشف أنه لا وين وين العصمة إنسان مذنب غافل جاهل بعيد عن الله كل البعد لأن العجب شيء خطير الله عز وجل يرأف بنا يرأف بنا يجعلنا أو يسمح لنا مو يجعلنا لأنه هذه يسلزم الجب يتركنا لحالنا فالإنسان يرتكب الذنب يكتشف حقيقته أنه هو إنسان جاهل إنسان مذنب لكي لا يدخل العجب في قلبه because for if we were to not sin at all we would assume we're infallible we would assume we're infallible so sometimes Allah lets us be for a second so that we realize no we're not infallible we're sinful we're not sinless وعن أبي عبد الله عليه السلام قال من دخله العجب هلك this is, this is a hadith not for the unrighteous not those who don't fast and don't pray and gamble and cheat and drink this is a speech for the righteous for you and me من دخله العجب هلك he who self admires himself admires his acts of worship thinking that his act of worship is incomparable to anyone else's my recitation, my dua, my salah, my fasting, he'll perish. It's the beginning of his end. It's the beginning of his end. وفي صحيحة علي بن سويد عن أبي الحسن عليه السلام قال سألته عن العجب الذي يفسد العمل قال العجب درجات علي بن سويد was a companion of Imam al-Kadhim عليه السلام He asked him about self-admiration uh, self <coughs> He said, yes, self-admiration has levels. This disease of ujb that only the righteous, only the religious 
are diagnosed with, it has various levels and stages. One stage, the Imam says, is to see your bad deeds as good. To see your negative deeds, your evil deeds as pleasant. Your bad deeds are decorated for you. You think you're doing good while you're actually doing bad. Al-Imam يقول منها أول درجة من العجب منها أن يزين للعبد سوء عمله فيراه حسنا فيعجبه ويحسب أنه ويحسب أنه يحسن صنعا الإنسان يرتكب المعاصي الأخطاء لكن يتصور أنه على صح على حق لا يرتكب الباطل الشيطان يتصرف بعقله الأعمال القبيحة تكون جميلة في نظره لأنه يعجب بنفسه العجب دخل في قلبه فيشوش له الحقائق الحقائق مغوشة بالنسبة له For example, let me give you an example There are some here in other countries they fight for certain minorities they fight for their rights the rights of certain minorities and you know who I'm talking about which minorities and they think that they're doing good they should fight their fight for their rights this specific group of minorities it's good to fight for their rights because in the eyes of the law everyone should be equal you're allowed to marry whoever you'd like so they fight for their rights thinking that this is good while well, this is heinous this is this is a, a disgusting behavior this is when shaitan comes and changes our perception something that is actually bad but it's decorated to look as good this is the first stage the second stage of ujb listen to this you will think does such a person exist yes انظروا الى الى المرحله الثانيه من العجب ايها العزاء فشيء عجيب يقول الامام ومنها ان يؤمن العبد ان يؤمن العبد بربه فيمن فيمن على الله عز وجل والله عليه فيه المان الانسان يصلي ويصوم ويمن على الله عز وجل يعني خلي يخلي على الله المنه اي هو يؤمن يصلي ويصوم وهو يخلي منا على الله أنا أنا مو صليت أنا مو صمت في شهر رمضان أنا مو قرأت الأدعية مو تلوت القرآن ختمة وختمتين وثلاث في شهر رمضان يمن على الله قل لا تمنوا على الله بل الله يمن عليكم أن هداكم الإيمان المنة من الله عز وجل There are some that do good and then they think they're doing Allah a favor by praying by Fasting by reciting Quran, we're doing Allah a favor. What favor are you doing him? What favor are you doing him? Allah has a need of my salah, my broken salah, my fast-paced salah, my fasting that is only from eating and drinking and nothing else, my Quran that I don't even pay attention to. What favor have I done to Allah? None of it. If I do good, I've done for myself. Allah doesn't benefit. Ya ayuhal nasu antumul fuqara'u ila Allah. والله هو الغني. Allah is not in need of our worship. Allah is not in need of our worship. Thinking that you're doing him a favor is incredible. وفي صحيحة عبد الرحمن بن الحجاج عن أبي عبد الله عليه السلام قال إن الرجل لا يذنب الذنب لا يذنب الذنب فيندم عليه. ويعمل العمل فيسره ذلك فيتراخى عن حاله تلك فلأن يكون على حاله تلك خير له مما يدخل فيه What is the imam trying to say? The imam says that a person commits a sin and then feels guilty and then does a good deed and feels good It is better for him to feel guilty over a sin than to feel good over a good deed. To feel guilty over a sin is better than feeling, feeling good over a good deed. You're feeling, you feel good over what? Of course, in good deeds, there's self-fulfillment. There's self-fulfillment. There's spiritual fulfillment. But it doesn't mean 
that you allow ujb and self-admiration to enter your heart, to think that you're someone, that you're someone righteous, you're someone noble, you're someone extremely religious. This is very, very dangerous. وعن أبي عبد الله عليه السلام قال أتى عالم عابدا This is a, a beautiful story. الإمام الصادق يقول أتى عالم عابدا فقال له كيف صلاتك الإمام الصادق says that a man, a scholar came to a worshiper. عابد is a person who spends all of his time in worshiping. So that scholar told him كيف صلاتك Tell me about your salah. Describe to me your salah. فقال مثلي يسأل عن صلاته You're asking me about my salah? You don't know about my salah? My salah is famous. My salah is popular. عن مث... من مثلي يسأل عن صلاته وأنا أعبد الله منذ كذا وكذا فقال العالم كيف بكاؤك? So the scholar asked the worshiper Then tell me about Do you weep? Do you cry? فأخبرني عن بكائك فكيف بكائك قال أبكي حتى تجري دموعي I cry طبعا He means in, in an act of worship While praying I cry until my tears stream on my face فقال له العالم This is the punchline Listen to the punchline قال له العالم فإن ضحكك وأنت خائف أفضل من بكائك وأنت مدل مدلا عليك فيما قصدت فيه لك مدل يعني ماذا؟ يعني أنا أمن على الله بهذه العبادة أنا أفرح بهذه العبادة وكأنما أنجزت إنجازا كبيرا شنو الإنجاز؟ أنت ماذا قدمت؟ وما قدر أعمالنا بوجه كرمك أنا هذه الأعمال التي أقدمها شنو بالقياس إلى كرم الله عز وجل ولطف الله He told him, the scholar told the worshiper that you, if you were to laugh but being fearful of Allah is better than you laughing and feeling that you've done something for Allah. That you've done great acts of worship for the sake of Allah. And then he says, إِنَّ الْمُدِلْ لَا يَصْعَدُ مِنْ عَمَلِهِ شَيْءٍ A person who self-admires his worship, his acts of worship are not accepted. فصرت أدعوك آمنا وأسألك مستأنسا لا خائفا لا خائفا ولا وجلا هذا هذا الأمر الخطير أن الإنسان يدعو لا بخوف ولا بوجل مدلا عليك فيما قصدت فيه إليك الإمام يحذرنا من هذه الحالة What is it that we have to admire my dear friends If I were to fast every single day of my life and worship every hour of every night Have I done Allah a favor? Have I returned the favor for one of the bounties that Allah has provided me? My eyes, for example. My ears, for example. If I were to fast every single day of my entire life just to thank Allah for my eyesight, it wouldn't be enough. To thank Allah for my ears, it wouldn't be enough. To thank Allah for my brain, it wouldn't be enough. To thank Allah for the ability to breathe and to live, it wouldn't be enough. What am I admiring? What do I have to admire? الإمام زين العابدين عليه السلام عرف بالعبادة سيد العابدين زين العابدين عرف بالعبادة كان يقال له يا ابن رسول الله هذه العبادة عبادة عظيمة أنت تأتي بالصلوات وبالمناجات وبالأدعية بهذه العبادات العظيمة يكفي يكفي ذلك وأنت تتقرب إلى الله بهذه العبادات كان دائما يقول وأين عبادتي من عبادتي جدي علي بن أبي طالب أين عبادتي من عبادتي جدي أمير المؤمنين الإمام زي العابدين would we told that you're a great worshiper but he would not feel proud he did not admire his worship he would say where is my ibadah from the ibadah of my grandfather Ali if you had seen my grandfather Ali what would you say that is genuine worship that is genuine worship وفي حديث أيضا هذا الحديث عجيب حديث عجيب لنتعلم منه ونتأمل في هذا الحديث عن أحدهما إما الباقر أو الصادق يقول دخل رجلان المسجد أحدهما عابد والآخر فاسق 
فخرج من المسجد والفاسق صديق والعابد فاسق عجيب The Imam says either Imam al-Baqir or Imam al-Sadiq He says that two men enter the mosque One is righteous and one is corrupt a sinner They left the masjid and the one righteous is corrupt and the one corrupt is righteous same mosque at the same time and the same act of worship but the intentions are different because the one who's righteous came in with his worship feeling admirable admiring his own worship thinking highly of himself thinking highly of his worship he left and he didn't receive any rewards rather he went downhill but the one who's sinful who came to the masjid and performed acts of worship he came with the intention of seeking forgiveness, becoming righteous, asking Allah for forgiveness. He left as a saint and the other left as a sinner. Two, two individuals in the same mosque and the same act of worship. Naam. Al insan alladhi yadkhuluhu al ujb ibadatih huwa yatasawar anhu yatakarrab ila Allah bi hadha al amal. Abadan. Abadan. Yan hadir ila abadi hudud. Ila adna hudud. لأن هذه العبادة تبعده من الله تبعده عن الله عز وجل وهذا درس لنا ونحن مقبلون على ليالي القدر ونحن مقبلون على ليالي الطاعة والدعاء والصلوات علينا أن لا يدخل العجب في قلوبنا أن نتضرع إلى الله بهذه العبادة أن تكون هذه العبادة خالصة لوجه الكريم أن لا نعجب بهذه العبادة ونفرح بها نفرح على أي شيء نفرح بهذه بهذه العبادة المكسرة هذه الصلاة التي لا قيمة لها علينا أن نستحي من صلاتنا علينا أن نستحي من قراءتنا ومن تلاوتنا ومن قراءة الأدعية إحنا قرأنا لنا في الدعاء يعني جئنا بعمل صالح شنو سوينا إحنا قال الله عز وجل لداود يا داود بشر المذنبين وأنذر الصديقين الله told داود prophet داود يا داود Give good news to the sinners and warn the saints and warn the righteous. Ajib. The sinners receive good news and the righteous receive bad news? He said, yes. قَالَ كَيْفْ أَبْشِرِ الْمُذْنِبِينَ وَأُنذِرْ الصَّدِّقِينَ قَالَ يَا دَاوُدْ بَشِّرِ الْمُذْنِبِينَ أَنِّي أَقْبَلُ التَّوْبَةِ وَأَعْفُوا عَنَ الذَّنْبِ Tell the sinners that I will accept their forgiveness. I will accept their repentance. Tell them. Tell them not to lose hope. وَأَنذِرَ الصَّدِّقِينَ أَلَّا يُعْجَبُوا بِأَعْمَالِهِمْ And tell the good doers to not feel self-admiration towards their acts of worship. Not to admire their acts of worship. Don't be fooled. Don't be arrogant. Don't think that you've done something fantastic. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Look at the worship of our Prophet. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi did not think highly of his worship to the point that Rasulullah during Salat al-Layl he would stand on his toes. Imagine. Try standing on your toes for, a, for 10 seconds. Can you? Rasulullah would stand on his tippy toes the entire night in Salah. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi kana yaqif tawal al-Layl لصلاة الليل على رؤوس أصابعه ما كان يقف وقفة طبيعية على رؤوس أصابعه إلى أن نزل قوله تعالى طاها ما أنزلنا عليك القرآن لتشقى طاها we did not reveal the Quran so that you may tire yourself hurt yourself take it easy الأصبغ بن نباتة one of the companions of أمير المؤمنين عليه السلام he says, one day in Kufa, I decide, decided to spend the night in the house of Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam. So I went to his house and I spent the night in one of the rooms. Amir al-Mu'mineen went to his room and I went to my room. In the middle of the night, and I, and I knew how Amir al-Mu'mineen was tired. He was extremely tired. It was a difficult day for him. It was a tiresome day for Amir al-Mu'mineen. But in the middle of the night, I saw Amir al-Mu'mineen come down and stand to pray Salat al-Layl. I told him, Ya Amir al-Mu'mineen, you've had a long day. You've had a difficult day. You don't sleep. 
You don't get any sleep. You don't sleep during the day and you don't sleep during the night. Get some rest. Amir al-Mu'mineen says, Ya Asbagh, in nimtu, in nimtu nahar, dayyatu ra'iyyati. If I sleep during the day, I will lose my people. I am here to serve the people. And if I sleep at night, I will lose myself. I will lose the spirituality that I'm looking for. This was Ali ibn Abi Talib. Amir al Mu'minin alayhi salam had a love for ibadah, for worship, and he did it without feeling admir admir admiration for himself. Or his act of worship. Salla ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. There's a hadith, there's a story mentioned in Al Kafi. And this is a very interesting story that I will mention and I will conclude my speech, inshallah. When I can call the Ajiba, Qusa Ajiba Mathkura fi kitab Al Kafi, Marwiya, ka hadith, an Abi Abdullah alayhi salam. يقول كان عابد في بني إسرائيل لم يقارف من أمر الدنيا شيئا During the days of Bani Israel there was a worshipper a known worshipper who had never committed a sin and would always stand and worship Shaytan was jealous was envious of such a person If you remember in Muharram when I was here we gave a biography of Iblis. We said that one of the things that hurt Iblis, Shaytan, the most is when he sees worshippers. When he sees someone worshipping Allah sincerely with devotion, with concentration, he becomes envious and jealous. Iblis gathered his army. And he said, من لي بفلان Who can go and trick this Abid? Who can go and trick this Abid? فَقَالَ بَعْضُهُمْ أَنَا له. Some of his soldiers, the soldiers of Iblis, said, we will do it. We will do it. We will go and trick him. فَقَالَ مِنْ أَيْنَ تَأْتِيهِ فَقَالَ مِنْ نَحْيَةِ النِّسَاءِ He told him, how do you want to trick him? He said, I will go through lust and sexual desire. فَقَالَ لَسْتُ لَهُ لَمْ يُجَرَّبَ النِّسَاءِ You won't be able to. Because this man is immune from sexual Lust. فقال آخر فأناله قال له من أين تأتيه قال من ناحية الشراب واللذات قال لست له Someone else said I will go I'll be able to tempt him He said how? He said through drinking wine and alcohol and other temptations I said no You won't be able to فقال فقال آخر أناله A third said I will be able to tempt him قال من أين تأتيه قال من ناحية البر والعبادة I will come to him through his act of worship قال أنت لها You are the one You are the one that you can that you can tempt him So he came Let me shorten the lecture the narration So he came to him This soldier of shaitan came to this worshiper he came to into his house and he began worshipping. فَجَاءَ هَذَا الْجُنْدِي لِإِبْلِيسِ جَاءَ إِلَىٰ بَيْتِ هَذَا الْعَابِدِ مِنْ بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلِ وَجَعَلَ يَعْبُدُ اللَّهَ عَزَّ وَجَلَ إذن هذا بغلط بشيء شلون يريد يغوي شوفوا الإبليس كيف يعمل جنود إبليس كيف يعملون فجعل يصلي ويدعو ويصوم ويقرأ من دون كلل ومن دون ملل This Soldier of Shaytan, he came into the presence of this Abid and he began worshipping con consistently. Morning, day, morning, from, from morning till night, from night till morning, he kept on praying. The worshipper, he got tired. He got tired, but this Iblis, this soldier of Iblis, did not get tired. He kept on going. This Abid is a tired. I don't know how to do this. I don't know how to do this. تعب من الصوم تعب من الصلاة تعب من العبادة لكن هذا كان مستمر في عبادته فقال له he asked him how are you able to worship non-stop you see this Abid he, he had admiration of his own worship now he found someone who has greater worship than him هذا العابد كان يتصور هو العابد الحقيقي فإذا وجد شخصا أعبد من 
فكان يريد يكتشف السر قال له من أين أصبحت هكذا He told him it's simple I committed a great sin I committed a great sin And now I'm repenting I feel guilty It is my guilt that drives me to worship Allah Azza wa Jalla. He said, what did you do? He said, I went to the city. There is a woman. And I performed a heinous crime with her. A heinous sin with her. So if you want your act of worship to be like mine, go and do the same. He said, but I don't have money. I told him, I'll, I'll give you money. I'll give you two dirhams. قال له, أنا عبادتي لأجل الشعور بالذنب. أنا ارتكبت الفاحشة الرذيلة. فإذا أنت تريد تصل إلى هذا المستوى من العبادة أنت مروح مارس الرذيلة تصل إلى هذا المستوى من العبادة So he went This عابد from Bani Israel Imagine Because he wants his act of worship to increase He is willing to go and create, perform this sin So he went to the door of this woman And he threw down two dirhams And he said Let's perform this sin She said why? Everyone in the city, they recognized him. They knew he's a abid. What is he doing? Coming to the house of this woman who's notorious. What are you doing? Everyone assumed maybe he's trying to advise her, admonish her. هذا العابد معروف كان. فتصوروا أنه جاء ينصح هذه المرأة. هذه الامرأة ينصحها يأمرها بالمعروف. ينهاها عن المنكر. لا, لكن هو جاء يمارس الرذيلة. He said, no, no, I'm not here to admonish you or advise you. I'm here. To perform a sin. She said, why? Who sent you? He said, so and so. Told me that if you want your acts of worship to increase, you have to feel guilty over a sin. She told him, this is Iblis. This is Iblis who had sent you. And I will not perform this act with you. Although she was notorious for this behavior. Everyone in the city knew her. قالت له هذا الشيطان بعثك. أنت تتمارس الرذيلة لتشعر بالذنب لتكثر عبادتك عجيب هذا هذا عمل إبليس ماكو إلا إبليس معلمك هذا العمل فرفضت رفضت قالت أب أبدا أرجع that night she passed away this lady this woman she passed away in the morning they saw written on her door قد تاب الله عليها they saw that it was written on her door, Allah has forgiven her. What happened? What has happened? Why has Allah forgiven her? Allah has forgiven her because she stopped this abid from performing a mistake, a big mistake, from waking him up. Why? So that his acts of worship may increase and he does better. فَأَمَرَ اللَّهُ جِبْرَئِيلَ أَنْ يَذْهَبْ إِلَى مُوسَى عَلَيْهِ السَّلَامُ وَيَأْمُرُهُ بِالصَّلَاةِ عَلَى هَذِهِ الْمَرَأَةِ عَلَى جَنَازَتِهَا ويقوم بدفنها وقد غفر غفر الله لها لما قامت من النصيحة تجاه هذا العابد. الله أوردد موسى تجو and pray over her body and perform the صلاة الجنازة and Allah forgave her for waking up this worshiper. Tonight, my dear brothers and sisters, we celebrate the birthday of Imam Al Hasan عليه السلام. Imam Al Hasan is the second of our imams. It was a noble birth. رسول الله was extremely happy and delighted for the birth of Imam al Hassan. Imam al Hassan was notorious for his acts of worship. Imam al Hassan كان يعرف بصلاته كان إذا وقف بين يدي الله عز وجل وقف في المحراب تغير وجه لونه وجه لون وجهه تغير لون وجهه فقيل له ما بك يا ابن رسول الله he would stand for salah and the color of his face would turn pale. It would turn into different colors. So they would ask him, what is wrong with you, Yabn Rasulullah? He would say, أَتَدْرُونَ بَيْنَ يَدَيْ مَنْ أَقِفْ أَقِفُ بَيْنَ يَدَيْ جَبَّارِ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ I'm about to stand in the face of the creator of the skies and the universe. I'm about to speak to him. You think this is taken lightly? This should not be taken lightly. أَسَرُ اللَّهَ عَزَّ وَجَلْ أَنْ يَرْزُقَنَا زِيَارَتَهُ فِي الدُّنْيَا وشفاعته في الآخرة وشفاعة جده وأبيه وأمه وأخيه 
والتسعة المعصومين من ذرية أخيه بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد اللهم أن يسألك أن تجعل فيما تقضي وتقدر من الأمر المحتوم في الأمر الحكيم من القضاء الذي لا يرد ولا يبدل أن تكتبنا من حجاج بيتك الحرام المبرور حجهم المشكور سعيهم المخفور ذنوبهم المكفر عنهم سيئاتهم وأن تجعل فيما تقضي وتقدر أن تطيل عمري في خير وعافية وتوسع في رزقي وتجعلني ممن تنتصر به لدينك ولا تستبدل بي غيري أعوذ بجلال وجهك الكريم أن ينقضي عني شهر رمضان أو يطلع الفجر من ليلتي هذه ولك قبلي تبعة أو ذنب تعذبني عليه My dear brothers and sisters, I ask for your forgiveness. Forgive me for any of my shortcomings. I was delighted to be at your service in the past two weeks. Remember me in the coming nights of Ramadan on Liyal al-Qadr. You will also be in my dua. And ultimately, when I go back to Karbala, you will all be remembered in my duas in the shrine of Imam Hussein.